you, uh, you know, you evaluate a uh, brand potential um, by looking at a, a, a series of tangent points. And uh, so we look at, you know, what is the equity of the brand in the marketplace? So what's the awareness level, retention? We also look at how big their customer base is. In other words, you know, how many consumers, you know, market share in a marketplace. Uh, we also look at, you know, where they're located, you know, from a standpoint of social, uh, social uh, uh, rankings and also uh, we look at uh, their distribution channel from a standpoint, are they concentrated or diversified? They have great presence at retail or not? And those really help us understand the value of the brand from the intangible side, which is about 30% of all evaluation of companies is intangible assets, which are the brand, the brand value, and the brand equity. Well, the numbers are about 30%. They range, though, depending on, you know, I'm sure Coca-Cola's evaluation of its brand assets is probably in the 60 to 70%. We typically see that companies that uh, are much more emotionally driven, you take the automotive industry where people are buying cars based on emotions, the fragrance, the cosmetics, and uh, let's say the luxury, luxury segment, uh, the brand evaluation is much higher because the affinity to that brand is much more emotionally driven. So that's how we evaluate those. Uh, the next factor is uh, when you look at a brand, uh, this, the watch outs what I call and, and to make sure that uh, you, know, you don't get into trouble, is uh, you know, the leadership of the organization. Do they have a clear direction in the marketplace? Uh, is the organization uh, prone to disruption by uh, new upstarts or, or convergent industries that uh, currently are not their competitors that could potentially be their competitors? If you look at Amazon, what it's doing to the retail industry, and you look at the value of Best Buy, for example, a lot of the challenge they have is uh, from these disruptive new entries who are eating away their market share. So we look at things like that. We look at, um, you know, is the employees engaged? We know that organizations where the employees are engaged generate a 30% better return on investment than those organizations that have poor customer retention and customer loyalty and engagement. Well, not all of them do that. You know, obviously, private equity firms are looking at the tangible assets. You know, they do look at the leadership uh, of the organization. Uh, but my presentation is really about generating some awareness uh, to, to investors that they need to look at the intangible side of the business. They, look, they need to look at the company culture because most mergers and acquisitions fail because the culture of the organization doesn't integrate properly in the new direction. Um, and so I'm here really to raise that awareness uh, that, uh, that culture and the intangibles play an important role and that, that they should be evaluating that at a much higher uh, focus of uh, when they're doing uh, an evaluation of the company.